And uh, the first one we're going to go through is uh, as a, like a uh, commercial building, as this one, uh, or multi-residential building. And if we have a quick uh, overview of where that industry is at right now, I mean, this is it is quite a tough retrofit business, but we certainly see lots of momentum happening for new build heading towards heat pump for space heating and uh, domestic hot water. Right now, the existing stock, uh, uh, particularly in Victoria, it would be dominated by instant gas, and that does make quite a difficult retrofit. Uh, but there is still lots and lots of opportunities out there. Um, certainly, uh, um, we say that there's, uh, uh, when you look at centralizing the heating system, uh, there is energy efficiencies to be gained uh, and, uh, and opportunities there as well. Uh, as I mentioned, difficult retrofit, but it certainly can be done. So let's uh, let's let's kick this off. Uh, today we're going to talk to uh, we've got th three speakers here who have uh, lived through a couple of installations. And uh, the first introduction we've got is Norm Anderson, the director for Energy Smart Water, who has come off the bench even though he's sick with uh, our, our old friend uh, Corona there. Uh, but Norm soldiering on and and, and uh, joining us today. We've also got Chun Go, the general manager. And, uh, and one of their sister companies, Thermal Energy uh, Solutions, Peter Toe, has joined there and is going to tell us, take us through a, uh, a project. Um, uh, Peter, could I get you to share your screen and, and take us through your case where you've installed uh, heat pumps in, the, in, in some buildings? No worries. I'm good. Okay, you, you there? You want me to kick off, Jerry? Yeah, go yeah. for it, guys. I, I couldn't hear people. Yeah, look, I'll, it's uh, Norm Anderson here, Director of Energy, um, ESW and TESS. Just a little bit about Energy Smart Water. We're a, a global import and uh, supply company. Uh, supplying into not only Australia, a lot of products from Europe and other countries, um, but also into America, um, most of Asia and different things. So we've had a, lot, a pretty big um, place to stay in, place, sorry, place in the space of commercial heat pumps, especially in Singapore and Asia, where we've been doing commercial heat pumps for probably about the last 14 years. Um, with Obviously with our tanks and our systems, all the stuff that we designed here, uh, many years ago. Um, ESW and our uh, principal product, which was the uh, NMX Smart Cube, which is uh, integrated with the heat pump, <clears throat> was originally brought to the country 20 years ago. Um, so we still, we've had a lot of success with that product and it blends in quite well. Where Test fits in, that's another company that we own, that is um, where Peter is our senior engineer. Um, we do designs, um, we build systems and we supply, we install, we supply to the market as well. Um, so just a bit of a brief intro on that. I guess one of the things that we see a lot of too, Jared, in the uh, being, a, we also have another commercial hot water company as well. We're a pl major plumbing contractor in Melbourne as well. Um, we look after probably around about 2000 commercial buildings in residential sectors at the moment, but we're really at the at the face of dealing with customers every day. And we see our rate ratio for tendering um, changeovers and new work at the moment is probably around about 75 to 80% now pushed towards heat pumps to where it was with gas probably more or less two or three years ago. So there is a big shift. We've done many projects with heat pumps. Um, I think Pete and Sean are gonna run through the introduction with you to, to, to talk a little bit more about what we've done, some of the case studies. But we've done many projects um, one of the biggest ones we've, we've done is the youth detention centre down at Lara with about, I think about 26 heat pump sets with our tanks and um, the jobs working through the commissioning phase at the moment with no issues. Um, but look, I'm going to hand over to Chun and Pete and uh, take you through the presentation and explain a little bit more about our system. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so... Thanks for attending the webinar today. So like what uh, Norm had mentioned, we have been uh, supplying all the, uh, this system, heat pump and thermal storage to industrials, commercials, residential building, uh, hospitals, aged care, and also uh, defense and 
detention center. So this is basically what we've been doing. Uh, so recently we had uh, quite a long number of heat pump projects that in the CBD. So uh, we have successful, uh, successfully delivered that and able to have a proven uh, result that save the energy. So uh, as you can see on the slide here, you can see there's the thermal storage that we have and we call it as thermal uh, battery, which, which we found that in a good heat pump system, heat pump have to be one of the equipment that able to produce a very good heat source. And then with the good heat source, you have to keep it, uh, you have to store it in the proper thermal storage. So only you can effectively, uh, effectively and efficiently use the heat source that you generated. Else the heat source, will, if you don't have a proper storage on heat pump system, you're going to waste the heat that you generated as well. So it have to be a combined system that work it out. So if you look at the slide over here, uh, heat pump system, there are direct system and indirect system. So we are focusing more on the indirect system, where if you look at the uh, animation here, the heat pump itself, what we design is the heat pump will only run, uh, only heat up the water in the tank, which is not, is, is not a portable water, it's a water that's holding in the tank to store the heating and other thermal energy. So your portable water basically is running through the coil. You can see the blue arrow coming down, going into the coil, heat exchanger coil, pick up the source of heat, and then come out, you have insta instantaneously, you have hot water. So this is how our system design. So let's dig into the project that we recently uh, completed, 101 Collins Street. So this is a heat, heat pump system, basically to replace gas system that uh, existing gas system in the building. So 101 Collins Street, uh, Melbourne, in, uh, located in the Melbourne of uh, CBD of the, uh, Melbourne. So original uh, system was a uh, 7,000 liter corifier gas corifier so it's mechanical heating plant and this one the system is the first stage of the project so the first stage is only from uh, we are supplying 24 stories uh, hot water to the basin so it's from level 31 to level 53 of the building so this one we have saved them 81 percent of their um, energy usage so if you look at this, what we do is we use three of the 19 kilowatt commercial grade heat pump, high temperature heat pump, which generate up to 80 degrees C. And then we stored the energy in our thermal storage tank. So only four storage tanks. So this one will able to supply to 23 stories of uh, hot water for your basin. So this is stage one. So stage two will be upcoming where it's going to supply from level 13 to 34 which uh, would be something similar as well. So for this system, we have been operating, heat pump would be operating very minimal, where we heat up the water up to 75 to 80 degrees, and then the rest will be topping up uh, to 85 maximum degree uh, from the solar PV. So the solar PV will have, uh, will generate the power to run on the heating element as, as well. So it's a com combination of system. So with this, we had uh, successfully awarded with the National Energy Efficient Award recently. So uh, the advisor is from AGCOM Advisory as a consultant, and the client is one on one calling. So from this one, uh, the original system, old system, they're using about 356 gigajoule of gas per annum, just based on this, uh, this 23 level of of the building. The total building will be three stage. So total building height is 53 levels. So our system is sitting on the rooftop. So uh, with this system, we save them. The cost saving itself, if, if we base on the current gas price, we save them about 50, 60%. So energy saving is 81%. Chung, can I just jump in for a sec? Yep, sure. One of the other things, can you just go back a slide, Pete? One of the other things that we've um, considered too, Jared, um, is we, we did have three, well, we do have three range, size ranges of heat pumps, so 19 kilowatt, 32 and 64 kilowatt. But 
when we're trying to retrofit a building and future proof a building, we've chosen that we, we'd rather use the 19 kilowatt and build up more modular systems um, because we've got to be able to get the heat pump into the building and also be able to get the heat pump out of the building. So there's no point having a monstrous heat pump if we can't get it into the location. So we've we've made most of our designs now are focused around the smaller, the 19 kilowatt heat pump in a modular sort of phase. So you'll see that in some of the other projects we have as well. Gotcha. Yep. So what Lom said is because the uh, for this building itself, there's the access to the roof is only through the lift, service lift. So that's why a modular system would be better and we can uh, build, we prefab, prefabricate all the system in our factory in Domana. So what we do is we prefab all the headers, we prefab all the tanks on the skid, we, we mock it up. So basically when we deliver it to the site, it's on a loose, we just bring it in. Uh, the site plumber or trades people, they just, according to our drawing, plug it in, it's basically plug and play. So the thing is not only you saving time, and you save material on site because we know that trades will cost you a lot when they work on site. So we eliminate all those trouble for the customer and reduce their uh, project costs on installation. So, yeah. So uh, the next one will be triple to exhibition. I let Peter to continue on this one, Pete. Hi, thank you, Shane. So this is uh, another project in the Melbourne CBD is also triple to exhibition street. As you can see, uh, the previous system is a combination of a gas storage and electric res uh, resistive system. And we replace that with two tanks and two of the 19 kilowatt heat pumps. So in this case, a thousand liter storage and, and 38 kilowatt of a heat pump capacity. And the uniqueness of this project is that we're actually taking heat recovery from a mechanical plant to offset the heat pump runtime at the same time as well. So this schematic drawing shows how the system being laid out. As you can see, so like, um, we've got a heat pump to heat up the tank, storage tank. At the same time as well, we've got a mechan mechanical line, as you see in orange line, that uh, heat up the tank. So mechanical line usually runs at higher temperature. If they're running somewhere around uh, 70 degrees to 75 degrees Celsius. So we try to capture that uh, energy as much as we can to heat up the tank. And if, if the tank does drop in temperature down to, for example, uh, 60 degrees, then, then the heat pump will top up the temperature up to 65. Um, as you can see, so like most of our systems are prefab. And this is to control the environment in a way so like we, we know that this is a new technology it's a new system that we deliver to the installer to install them. And the one way to control that, if we prefab most of the skip, as you can see in the photos, we prefab all the pipeworks on the skip and we deliver them to site and place them in there so that the installing plumber will then con uh, just need to do the connection from the heat pump uh, to the storage tanks. Um, this is an example of a gym, which is a very recent data. Uh, uh, last month that we, we took a snapshot of it and we're trying to determine how much of the gas consumption it will reduce. So we so you can see the gas consumption uh, from 2012 all the way to 2022, you can see the pattern set go on from that as well. And at the same time, so you can see how the electricity consumption drops, uh, well, I mean, the usage drops as well at the same time. So at, at the time of uh, this data, the building was at 75% occupancy, and we still managed to reduce um, the, well, pretty much the, the gas, 55% of gas consumption of the whole building. The mechanical plant is still running on gas, and they're still they are looking to phase out that mechanical plant uh, as well. Um, yeah, so in total wise, we're looking at the, uh, yeah, 49% reduction in the total uh, energy consumption. According to the building manager, the, the hot water upgrade is the only upgrade, major upgrade that happening uh, uh, from uh, we, when we install the hot water till, uh, till June. So they haven't had any upgrades in between then. So, um, so we, we're still looking to dissect in terms of the, uh, the especially the, the electricity, electricity consumption to see uh, what is the actual uh, increase in electricity consumption that but we also notice as well besides we've got an offset from the clinical plan that able to reduce that uh, heat pump runtime quite significantly. Wow. 
So this is uh, here the other projects that we have done in terms of some 20 bucks straight, just to show how we more are uh, able to modulate the system accordingly. So we prefect all this system and we place it on site and then the installing partner just connect them up um, the, the, the pipe work. So we make it very easy for the installing partner and, and reduce uh, troubleshooting on site as well and, and also control the installation uh, process, uh, on site installation process. So uh, just to add on, Peter, draw it back. The photo on the right hand side, that is the one uh, in the uh, youth prison. Mm -hmm. So this is the youth prison project. So this is just one part of the plan that we put up. So there are a total of uh, over tw 23 heat pump that we put into this, this area. Mm -hmm. Yep, thank you. Yeah. So in terms of these two projects, the main challenges that we know uh, that is that the difficulty of uh, system monitoring. So what we learned is that we, uh, initially we thought that the BMS was able to monitor every aspect of the energy uh, within the system or within the building. Uh, what we learned the hard way is that um, we, the BMS does not do that. And in fact, the, um, one of the challenges is actually the BMS integration as well, how to integrate uh, the mod bus system from a heat pump to the BMS system in a building. Uh, it is one of the area that uh, we are looking to improve to how to make it easier for the building managers and the BMS to be able to integrate the system uh, yeah, um, properly. And one of the other things as well is the equipment footprint and access is one of the major uh, area that we look at. Heat pump require a much bigger footprint compared to a gas storage or gas system. So we need to find a proper location where we can get a fresh air, proper fresh air and proper uh, cool air discharge, uh, a proper pathway, chart up a proper pathway to make sure that the heat pump installation get a proper ventilation as well. And site access where we're able to get the equipment from ground floor all the way to the roof. A lot of these equipments are plumbing equipment still placed on the roof. So we need to keep that in mind how to reduce the installation cost and get equipment from ground floor up, uh, up, uh, up there. And the next thing is to justify the higher capex for the pump. So we do run an ROI and run a uh, running cost uh, before we install the system uh, as well as so to make sure the clients is informed in terms of like you know, by using spending high expenditure, what will be the uh, expected you know, payback uh, for that system? Okay. And yeah. No. yeah. No. And last slide is that the lesson learned is that uh, we we learned this aside probably we need to implement part of MMB to the project uh, to actually to better understand in terms of the energy consumption of the system. And yeah, and, and plan monitoring at the at, at the at the start of project will be useful as well, so that we uh, for building manager and for us to look at the project and see how we can further improve in terms of the energy efficiency of our water and heating system. Yeah. Good one, thanks, Peter. So I'm I'm hearing some uh, lessons learned there regarding uh, uh, using those smaller systems so you can get it into the building. Uh, I've got a question for you. Then you said it was. Uh, it is larger equipment than the uh, typical what would be there before a gas gas burner, hot water boiler. Um, what um, what was there beforehand? Yeah, I saw in, in that photo that was positioned right next to some vents at the side of the building. What what was there beforehand? What did they have to remove from there to to fit that in? I thought, yeah, that top right photo. What was there beforehand? Yeah. How did they? Uh, so they, did they yeah. So uh, one of the challenges that we do uh, is that they, they got a mix of a gas storage and 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 hot water electric hot water system at the same time as so well that whole heat, that plant room was a storage for the building managers in terms of different equipment so we we have to negotiate with them in terms of like how we need more space we need more ventilation we need a proper pathway air pathway from point a to point b so we do need to negotiate with the uh, building managers how to repurpose the plant room accordingly so that the heat pump is a fit for purpose uh, uh, for the heat pump to be placed there. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, so, so you can see the, how, I guess it's like the, the shot is just like how messy initial uh, plant room is. They need to remove a lot of pallet racking equipment parts. 
to make it fit for purpose. Sounds like people had to be fairly flexible there as well to uh, to get that to happen. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Peter, Norm, and Chun, and uh, much appreciated. Lots of good practical uh, uh, experience there, and good to see this being done and and, and things happening in practice. Um, we, we are just a tad over time, so I'll get to you guys if you could open up that Q&A box and type in some answers and then everybody should be able to see that. That'd be great. And just to wrap up here, I'm just going to bring uh, Ahmed uh, back in and we're just going to review a little bit of the key lessons learned there and, and how that fits into the overall thinking. Um, Ahmed, uh, uh, quite a few uh, issues there which were raised and important for that um, uh, uh, designing and sizing that heat pump. Um, yeah, sure. Thanks, um, Jared. Um, I actually um, owe a big thank you to, e to the ESW um, team, not only for um, this excellent presentation and um, excellent case study here, but also because they have um, been very supportive of us during um, the development of this guidance document and the body of work that we have done in this project. Um, for example, this, this part of um, the webinar here that I'm going to um, explain is um, heavily um, based on the experience that um, these guys have um, gained throughout all those um, projects and they have shared us with their generosity. Um, in, in, on this slide and on a few other slides that you will see um, later in this webinar, we have uh, this sort of um, charts um, that explain just only synopsis of the content that we have put into the guidance document you will see in a few weeks. Um, I mean, on the right hand side and on the left hand side, you see the same procurement guide that um, Jared explained at the beginning of the seminar. On the right hand side, what you see is uh, the key elements of the design considerations that we have covered for this is that we have highlighted for this specific application in the guidance document. Um, all the time, the central component that we have defined today is understanding the, how the energy flows in an application. But perhaps I should say that for this um, um, residential buildings, and um, most of the time we are aware of the energy flow and the thermal demands. If we don't know that, we should definitely run an audit and understand it. But if it is available, then it is, it is like a less of a concern. However, uh, building upon that energy um, profile of the building, what needs to be done um, as the cheapest option to improve the successful implement implementation of a heat pump is run, um, is go through the first step of energy efficiency improvement um, on the site. And easy options for energy efficiency improvement to be able to reduce the load includes, for example, better air tightness or a better thermal insulation of the building. But it is not only this, we do not have time to go through all of them. And um, we refer um, the audience to go to the report and, and to the guidance document, see a full list of these aspects there. The second important um, design consideration is the water temperature. Um, most of the time, um, the um, supplied water temperature um, has been selected, selected according to, let's say, for example, um, hydronic heating system requiring 80 degrees C, for example, temperature. But we know that with a better with, with improvement of the heat transfer rate from those heating um, elements in, in the building, we can run the entire system at a lower temperature. So that needs to be revisited. And by increasing the heat transfer of those panels, we reduce the required temperature and enable more heat pump options to deliver the heat. Um, of course, load the smoothing um, with the use of um, thermal storage and controlling the load, for example, um, on the domestic hot water application part of the um, 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 application, what, what, what we can do is we can, let's say, reduce the flow rate if um, many um, features turn on, like hot water um, taps turn on. Um, to control the load. Of course, waste heat recovery. Um, you guys from um, you guys in your presentation, your slides uh, presented the opportunity of waste heat recovery. It, it, if waste heat is available in the building, we definitely want to utilize it um, to help the heat pump operate at a higher COP. 
and also avoid icing of the heat pump in those extremely cold conditions. They are rare, but if we can eliminate them, that is very beneficial. The space constraint, you guys spoke about that um, brilliantly. Um, you provided an example of that. What we mean by that is the required flow area. We have talked about that in the guidance document and also the noise. Um, that needs to be controlled and, and of course the microclimate effect that again you guys explained there and we need with microclimate um, effect what we are referring to is being able to avoid temperature drop around the heat pump system just because of their own operation there. And uh, the auxiliary heating um, it was very interesting to see that um, ESW is utilizing the on-site PV as a um, extra heating to raise the temperature inside the tank. If we require a higher temperature beyond the capability of the heat pump, we can use auxiliary heating um, for different purposes. For example, um, one example is to um, suppress Legionella growing in the tank. And also um, another aspect that requires an auxiliary heater, sometimes we call them like backup heaters, is when um, during very cold conditions, when the thermal load is high and the COP of the heat pump is relatively lower and the auxiliary heater can come in and compensate for that. 